risen indeed. Oh, I miss seeing your faces this morning. I miss being in community, but I am so thankful for technology that connects us. I have to let you know I've been on the lookout for angel stories, and I have heard so many beautiful ones coming in from Acton this week. Angels who have hidden Easter eggs for the kids, angels who have delivered Easter baskets as surprises, angels who have connected with each other, making new friends, new communities being formed in this time of isolation. It's just been so beautiful to hear and lifted my heart with such hope. I've been also on the lookout and listening for angel stories in our scriptures. That we have angels from our very beginning, right, that stood outside the garden gate with their flaming swords, barring the way for us to ever enter. Angels that appeared to Abraham and Sarah as strangers, but were angels in truth. Angels on the ladder. In Joseph's dream, angels that were placed on the tabernacle, on the holiest of holies. They framed the mercy seat. These angels represented the angels that were guarding the garden gate. There was one angel at the head, one angel at the foot. We needed those angels there to shield us from God. We needed angels as an intermediary between us and God. We have angel stories, angels who went to Zechariah tell him of his son. Angels that went to Mary and Joseph. Angels that announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born. Angels that tended to Jesus after his 40 days in the wilderness. And angels Easter morning. Angels that appear after grand earthquakes to sit on the stones. Angels that announce he's not here, he's risen. And angels Oh, and that's Gospel of John's story. See, Mary sets out in the early morning, in the dark of the early morning, a time of mystery and wonder. And she heads to the tomb and finds the stone had been removed. She races to go tell the disciples he's not there. And then starts the great foot race between Jesus, uh, between Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. They race there, the other disciple gets there first. He leans in and he sees the pile of linen there. Peter gets there quickly after, barges all the way into the tomb, sees not only the pile of linen, but the cloth that had been on Jesus' head. We have cloth at the foot, cloth at the head. The disciple whom Jesus loves believes we don't know about Peter, but they both leave, leaving Mary there alone with her tears and crying and full of heartache and grief. She herself dares to look into the tomb and through her tears, she doesn't see what Peter and the other disciples see. She doesn't see two piles of linen. She sees two angels two angels angels who interrupt her crying mary why are you crying angels that wake her up to break her from that spell of grief so that she can turn and see who she thinks is the gardener all of a sudden friends we're back in the garden aren't we all these images swirling around that original paradise in which we are created. There's something new happening here. For Mary to come in and see two angels standing like one at the head and one at the foot, harken back to the tabernacle, harken back to the garden gates. Jesus wakes her up fully. I love how her heart is fully released when he calls her name and she can see everything clearly for that day when the Savior calls your name, that you'll wake up fully, that your heart will be free, that you'll be released, that you'll know that joy, that love that's always been there. So she's awake, she sees, she feels that hope, that wonder. <laughs> he's risen. He's not here, he's risen. She goes to tell the other disciples, this 
peace of the angels, where they are, where they call us back to. The angels that were always needed to be between us and God, no longer needed. For here's Jesus. For God has opened paradise. Death has lost its sting. For this time where we feel, in this time of isolation, the fears and the worries of the virus, where in some real ways the garden gates feel closed, we have the hope of Jesus. We have the resurrection. We have Jesus who showed us there is nothing more to fear. There is nothing more to cry about. There is no more fear of death. Death has lost its sting and the world is different. The world is different. So Leonard's Sweet poses this question that has been ringing in my heart. I offer to you this day for your Easter celebration. When have you been seeing piles of dirty laundry, which in fact are angels, unaware? Where in your life have you been focused on the garden being closed? Where in your life have you only felt the separation from God, the separation from yourself, the separation from each other, the separation from the earth? It's Easter. It's Easter. So listen and look and feel the angels that are there announcing God's new world. This world is now different because of the grace, the power, the gift of Easter morning. Go forth looking for angels, ah, serving as one of Christ's beloved that may be of an angel presence to another. Go forth with great hope, great joy. Death has lost its sting. <laughs> Christ has opened paradise. Go forth with this great news. Amen.